All right. So speaking of this abortion issue, later on, we're going to, I hope, uh, have our conversation with a young woman who is the editor in chief of the UCLA Advocate. And she's the founder of this group called Live Action, which is involved in exposing these outrageous, criminal outrages, if you ask me, at the Planned Parenthood Indiana clinics. And we're going to talk to her about what she did posing as a 13-year-old who had been impregnated by a 30-year-old man. So that's going to be coming up on the Laura Ingram Show. She's an undergrad at UCLA, and uh, she's majoring in history. You know, if she were if she were doing some type of expose on, like, the NRA, any conservative group, or let's say a pro-life group, and she was, was able to trick them into saying something that made them look bad, she would be the toast of the town, right? She didn't be invited on Jon Stewart and... And all the fancy shows, right? Should be on with Letterman and on the couch with on the, with the View girls and all that. I mean, she'd be well. But of course, Lila will be with the Laura Ingram show, and that means millions of people will hear what she has to say. How did she get involved in this? And can we can we expect more sting operations? Don't go away. Chickens are coming home to roost. Okay, how old are you? Uh, I'm 15. Okay. I didn't hear the age. I don't want to know the age. Okay. It could be reported as rape. Oh, okay. And that's child abuse. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. So I, I just say, I don't know who the father was, but he's one of the guys at school or something. Right. The voice of the young woman that you heard in that soundbite is Lila Rose. She's the editor-in-chief of the UCLA Advocate and founder of a group called Live Action. And she's waging an investigative battle against the nation's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood. And this was the Indiana, an Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana clinic. And Lila posed as a 13-year-old who came into the clinic, said she had been impregnated by a 30-year-old, and the Planned Parenthood worker... Uh, endeavored to get her to so well, I don't know how old you are I don't want to know how old you are and because otherwise that could be you know that could be rape and wink wink nod nod she's been awarded a hundred thousand dollar life prize by the Gerard Health Foundation of Natick Mass and she uh, really deserves our support and encouragement and what she's done very bravely as a student Lila great to have you with us Thank you so much for having me on, Laura. Uh, well, Lila, tell us first how you got into this business of of doing these sting operations on Planned Parenthood. Of course. Well, as many of your listeners probably already know, Planned Parenthood has been covering up the sexual abuse of young girls in these clinics across the country for years, and they are, you know, actively pursuing the pro-abortion agenda and aborting hundreds of hundreds of thousands of lives a year. I did my first investigation as a freshman in college with my friend James O'Keefe of Planned Parenthood in two L.A. Los Angeles clinics right, right near to UCLA. And in both those clinics, my very first two visits, I discovered manipulative counseling, medical misinformation, and, of course, the blatant violation of state statutes to protect young girls from sexual abusers and the cover-up of sexual abuse. So... You were part of that initial investigation into the uh, well, the calls that were made to the clinics also to abort black children, right? That was that was you as well? Yes, uh, that was after the Los Angeles um, sexual abuse cover-up investigation about a year and a half ago. About a year ago, we did the racism investigation because Planned Parenthood was founded by a racist, a eugenicist. Margaret so Sanger. Invest- Margaret Sanger, that's right. We did an investigation of that. And then this is our latest one that we just released a few days ago of Bloomington, Indiana, and that's part of a new project called the Mona Lisa Project that we're doing that is basically a national multi-state investigation to get this footage for the public so the American people can see what's really going on behind the closed doors of Planned Parenthood. Now take us inside the Bloomington Clinic uh, from the moment you stepped in, stepped across the threshold. Of course. Well, the moment I stepped in, the first thing you see on the door is the credit card sign, 
and that's actually on the tape if you watch it on our website or watch it online. So that immediately, I mean, we're thinking these abortions cost money. This is an organization that also receives a third of its billion-dollar budget from taxpayers, from the American people. But we go into the clinic. I say I'm 13, put it down on the paperwork, put my name Brianna down. That's the name that I use, and go in to talk with the nurse. The nurse tell her that I'm 13, tell her that I the, the man is actually 31 years old. She says, I don't want to know how old he is, that's sexual abuse, I don't, want to, I, I don't want to deal with this. Ultimately, she ends up telling me to say that he's 14, if anyone asks, to say that I've seen him around school so that no one will ever know that it was an older man and so that I can get a secret abortion. And then she directs me out of state out of Indiana to a state where there is no parental consent law or parental notification law, so the 31-year-old man can take this 13-year-old girl to get a secret and illegal abortion that the parents aren't, aren't alerted about, and no one will ever know about the sexual abuse or about the fact that this little girl had an abortion. Now, how are you recording the conversation? We use police quality undercover equipment. Mm-hmm. And... W- so how long did it take from the time you walked in and you began the counseling for you to realize that this woman was willing to cover up what was obviously, a, if, if the facts were true, a statutory rape? Well, I just like the, the many other clinics I've been to across the country, it's very quickly that we immediately see the disregard for the girl's ultimate well-being. Instead, it becomes this very fierce agenda that abortion is the number one thing for this girl, the number one solution, forget the other options, and God forbid the parents are involved, God forbid that any other decisions might be made or, and, or the girl's well-being when it comes to you know, being protected from a sexual abuser is considered, or even the state statutes are followed, the number one priority is get this girl a secret abortion and, and send her back to the sexual abuser with a bag of condoms and there's the end of the story for the girl. Have the authorities in Indiana offered uh, or, or tried to speak to you about doing a, an investigation and trying to uncover really what's going on here? You know what? I, I am so sad to say that they have not, that there is no investigation that I know of ongoing in the state of Indiana, but we, de- we are just calling. We demand that the attorney general of that state and that the district attorney of Bloomington do something about this because there are young girls that are going in there that are at risk, that are the victims of older men, that are in situations of sexual abuse, and they're getting these secret abortions to cover up the crimes. I mean, this is, this is something that's been documented across the country, and people need to stand up and actually prosecute this criminal activity of Planned Parenthood.